They're back, but unfortunately, they're not all together. Our scattered Tuesday trio of MPs are with us for their 2014 debut from Edmonton. Conservative James Rajat here in the studio where she's getting ready to attend the NDP caucus meeting on Thursday. Deputy NDP leader Megan Leslie and from Sydney, Nova Scotia. Liberal Roger Cousiner, welcome to you all. We we're just talking about that wireless spectrum auction. Uh, I want to go to you first, Megan, because your party put out some releases on this. Is this auction going to be a disaster, or can the consumers still win? Oh, that's that's a good question. Um, and if I'm looking at track record, I'm going to say a little bit of a disaster. Um, there's still a window for consumers to win, but if I look at track record, look at the last auction, look at the fact that we're still we're still in a place where. Um, the government hasn't acted to ensure that, for example, in rural communities, they have access to uh, to the spectrum. Um, so, so if we're looking at what has happened so far, government's reluctance to intervene, government's really been dragging their heels. Uh, why is it taking so long for the spectrum to come, uh, not the spectrum, for the auction to come forward? When's it closing? We don't. We, there's some basic things we don't know. So I'm a bit skeptical. Uh, we'll see how it Not plays you. out. you. A first question of the new year, oh, and you're already skeptical. Skepticism. Roger Cousiner, are you a <laughs> half glass half full or half empty kind of guy when it comes to wireless spectrum auctions? Uh, well, past the the, the, the glass, <laughs> I, I think it's a kick in the pants to uh, to James Moore. Uh, I think it's a kick in the pants to the government, and probably to, to the government for a number of reasons. Uh, it's a kick in the pants to the uh, taxpayers. Uh, when you look at the money that they've spent, over nine million bucks advertising, the, you, you know, really uh, as an attack on the three major Canadian providers, and uh, this is the outcome, I think it's a bit of a surprise. But I think it's also going to be a big surprise to the finance ministry because he had uh, uh, suggested and all, probably already factored in uh, the, the uh, big windfall from the uh, auction, from the Spectrum auction. And uh, I don't think that we're going to see that uh, in this round. Okay, uh, James, a kick in the pants, and is James or is uh, Jim Flaherty going to be upset with the result? No, and in fact, if you look at the last spectrum, the last spectrum brought in much more than expected in terms of revenues to the government. But this, the important thing about this for your viewers is it ensures that Canadian companies can provide more services, faster service to Canadian consumers. So in the end, the consumer will win. I think James Moore has spoken very articulately on that. I would. I would actually say I'm, I'm perhaps uh, a bit of an anomaly in the political world. I, I actually think we have a very competitive industry here in Canada. The consumer is generally well served by the competition we have from the companies in place. And these companies are major employers in my riding and across the, across the country. They're major investors in terms of charities across the country. So we actually have a very, very good industry. Could it be better? Could service be better in some areas? Absolutely. And let's work with the industry on that. That's what industry uh, Minister James Moore is doing exactly. But I, I'm a half uh, glass full kind of guy, Don, as you know, so I might, I might I'm looking forward to the auction very, uh, very expectantly. I might send that clip to my bosses at Bell Canada. Thanks for that, James. But I do want to <laughs> bring up uh, uh, another clip that you might not Speaking find. Speaking of improvements. <laughs> you might not find too much fun. Um, Stephen Harbour, his first question. First question as the opposition leader back in 2002 with James Rajat in the background of this clip said that given the growing evidence of widespread waste and mismanagement of government advertising business and the fact that the government's incompetent handling of the advertising and sponsorship is already under review, will the Prime Minister stop the waste and abuse right now and order a freeze on all discretionary government advertising? Now that's kind of ironic because right now Stephen Harper is facing uh, a challenge because of the fact he's put $2.5 million worth of advertising out there on this for Canada Jobs Grant that really hasn't even started yet. I got to ask you, Rod, uh, James, on this one. Isn't that a bit hypocritical for the Prime Minister to denounce the, the Chrétien Liberals so forcefully, and now he's doing exactly the same thing, in fact, in some cases more so? Well, I, I think you have to look at the advertising in question. I'm frankly disappointed that Canada Jobs Grant has not thus been taken up with respect to by the provinces or provincial uh, governments across Canada in my area with businesses I was just at an economic development luncheon here in Edmonton it's the number one issue I mean Ledcor the company I was sitting with said the number one issue in terms of challenging with economic growth is finding enough people the right people who can fill these positions the Canada jobs grant in last year's budget I thought it was an outstanding idea in terms of getting the, the the private sector getting the company the federal government the provincial government to each kick in about five thousand dollars each in terms of ensuring that we match people with the jobs because that's one of the biggest crises we have is we have people without jobs and jobs without people. So this 
program, in my view, is the best way to address that. And so I, I would say it's less a concern with the advertising. I think it's a, it's a concern that the provinces have not jumped on this and grabbed this and said this is a program that we want to that we want to work with the federal government on. So that's that's I guess my greater disappointment on that issue, Don. New year, he still avoids the question as well as the last year, Megan. Though I mean, question is advertising <laughs> dollars for a program that doesn't exist that the prime yeah. minister, when he was opposition leader, condemned. Yeah, liberal Tory, same old story. <laughs> it's that quote's amazing. I almost wish that I would just hold it up and that could be my answer. Well, it's, it's in the Huffington Post right now. I should credit them. They dug yeah, it up. Yeah, they, they dug it up. They did a good job. Um, it really is incredible that $2.5 million was spent on a program that doesn't exist and add that to the $100 million spent on the Economic Action Plan. And we've seen polling results saying that 95% of people who have seen the ad, if in fact they have seen them, mm -hmm. aren't compelled by it to actually take advantage of what it purports to offer something that doesn't exist but they're not even compelling enough and there's you know it's the same old same old so the PM criticizes or sorry he wasn't the PM the opposition leader uh, Stephen Harper criticizes Chrétien's government then does the same thing mm -hmm. then we have Justin Trudeau stand up in the house this is beautiful right before Christmas he stands up and he's talking about oh the conservative scandals they've become what they once mocked and he sits down defiantly and it's like well you know Justin he was uh, actually mocking the liberals so like it's the same same old, same old with these two. You can't, you can't trust them. Right, Roger. Uh, she's talking, but she's trash talking your leader a bit there. But what do you make of all this change in tone? Uh, well, I, I think Canadians would enjoy that political debate uh, between uh, Stephen Harper, the leader of the opposition from uh, uh, you know 2002, and Stephen Harper, the prime minister, because he's he's certainly. Uh, you know, it, it's a, a different approach now that he has the uh, reins of power. Uh, you know, and, and they did beat up the you know liberal governments. I was part of a government in 2002. The uh, the total amount spent was a uh, hundred and eleven million dollars on advertising that year. But don't forget, that's in the wake of 9/11. That's in the wake of Mad Cow, and uh, information had to be shared with the Canadian public. But you know, to advertise uh, you know programs that uh, don't even exist, I don't think you'd see. Uh, you know, McDonald's or Tim Hortons uh, advertising for a, a product that they don't have or a product that uh, isn't uh, close to being ready. Uh, you, you know, this is still a ways off, but uh, to, to see the amount of money that they've uh, that, that they've wasted and really ha have had it's had no impact on the uh, on the public whatsoever. Uh, it, it's it's a terrible. When you look at some of the things that are being, you know, we, we've got military cadets going to the Arctic and they have to buy their own parkas. So <laughs> it's insane some of the decisions that this government has made. It's embarrassing, and I I I'm, would hope the Canadians are paying attention to this stuff. All right, I'd like to keep going, but I got other topics I want to get to before we wind up, run out of time. Neil Young. I thought they're, you know, singing against the oil sands rather loudly. I'd like to get your thoughts on this, James Rajat. And I think I know the answer that you're going to give. Is this like a rallying cry for a worthing cause or ignorant fear-mongering in your view? Well, I, I, actually, I thought Tasha Carradine had a good article today basically saying we should, we should actually talk about some facts here. I mean, he's Neil Young. I appreciate him as a singer-songwriter, many of his albums. But, I mean, in terms of he, he's talking about all this oil isn't going to the United States. It's, in fact, going to China. Well, 99% of it is going to the United States. Um, so I think we should actually talk about some facts on, on the table with respect to Aboriginal involvement. I mean, I think this industry has been a leader going back to Eric Newell, the former head of Syncrude, in the early days of development of the oil sands is ensuring that Aboriginals are partners. There's about 30,000 uh, First Nations persons working in, the, in that sector itself. I mean, th there have been some fantastic partnerships between those companies and First Nations, and that's, that's exactly what they should be doing. They should be developing obviously in a sustainable way and in terms of developing in a sustainable way I invite people to actually go to the all sands go to the the site where they show you and they they show the three sorts of reclamation the one that has actually been approved by the Alberta government the one that has yet to be approved and the one that is natural forest it's very challenging for anyone to say what the difference is there so I would encourage you know just as we encouraged uh, James Cameron to actually go to the go to the oil sands themselves, see what the development is like, see what the reclamation is like on the environmental side, and talk to some First Nations communities there. Talk to First Nations people who are actually working for companies like St. Crude and Suncor up in the north. Okay, Megan, where are you on Neil Young singing the oil sand blues? 
Well, I would encourage people if they do take that trip to actually go visit uh, communities like Fort Mackay and Fort Chippewan that are downstream and talk to people there about their realities. Um, I think that this concert really is a manifestation of what people are feeling across the country. They, they're frustrated. They're really frustrated with the government. What they've seen uh, our environmental regulations completely gutted in the last budget. Uh, they don't have any faith in the environmental regime that, that exists. Uh, they feel voiceless. We have a Minister of Natural Resources who is, uh, you know, hewed and cried about too many people appearing at these joint review panels for energy projects. So I think when you see reactions like concerts, <laughs> like like fundraisers like this, that's a real, that's the sentiment of a lot of Canadians. Okay, Roger Cousner, last word on this issue to you. Well, I'm pretty, I'm much closer to, uh, to, to James on this. Having lived in Fort McMurray for nine years, uh, seeing how the technology has uh, has evolved and developed, knowing that uh, the companies put a tremendous amount of uh, 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 of work and resource into being the be the best they can be, uh, you know you can always uh, improve on the uh, you, you know on the science around it, the technology, and they're committed. The the major companies are committed to that. But I've seen firsthand the benefit to many of the First Nations communities, and I've been to Fort Mackay, I've been to Fort Chip. Uh, I, you know, I, I've been to those communities, and uh, many of the most successful entrepreneurs in northern Alberta come from the First Nations communities, and it's because of initiatives that were really started by great Canadian oil sands, GCOS before Suncor, right. and then Suncor, Syncrude have been great uh, uh, corporate community partners. And uh, so for Neil Young to come out, you know, have this debate on facts, but he was his comments were, were so void of fact. I, I respect his courage and I respect his you know his, his place to, to make those statements and you know he's got a history of speaking out against slavery and you know uh, just you know that's his career so he, he's a courageous man but uh, you know be an informed spokesman if you're going to represent those facts be informed and I don't think he was in this case quickly I want to go around the table I only got a minute left uh, I want to get one look ahead sort of prediction from each of you what 2014 is going to bring. I'll start with you, James Raja. What's one thing you expect to see in 2014? Two sentences or less. This is a political expectation because if it's sports, I would say. No, nope, no, nope, political, not expectation. sports. No Oilers aren't going to win Canada doing Cup. much better than they did on the building on the success in 2010. <laughs> political law being the finance drive, I obviously look forward to the budget each and every year. But I would say uh, Michael Chong's uh, bill, looking forward to debate on that bill this spring and hopefully a vote this spring on that in Parliament. Roger Kuzner? I'd like to say more heartwarming stories about Paul Calandra's uh, family, <laughs> but uh, probably, I think we're going to probably hear more from the RCMP on uh, the investigations. There's just too much going on, uh, you know, between the uh, between Elections Canada and the RCMP. I think that's, folks, okay. that's what's I on the menu uh, in the mo coming months. I think that's a safe prediction. Last word to you, Megan. A uh, bad year for the Conservatives. It's going to be uh, yeah, more more about the Senate, uh, more about things like Dean Del Mastro, uh, what's going on with his uh, with his past election, uh, more about robocalls. I think it's going to be a bad year. Ooh. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your first appearance of 2014. Hope to have many more. Thank you all for joining us. Thanks.